Chapter 146, Imperial Envoy. The Imperial Envoy wasn't very interested in this and replied faintly, what kind of delicious food can one buy for one copper coin? This rumor sounds a bit exaggerated. The overseer had eaten the family's braised food before. Although he thought it was quite delicious, he didn't have the guts to foolishly rebuke the imperial envoy. He smiled flatteringly. The Lord is right. In addition, that food is made of pig head meat, pig offal, pig blood and other ingredients that other people wouldn't touch. With your lordly status. You absolutely would disdain eating this. You can't say something like that. The Imperial Envoy rubbed at the short beard under his chin, and his eyes became misty. He apparently was reminiscing about his past. Silence prevailed for a long time before he finally continued. In those days, I was with my master defending the borders from our enemies. We had been besieged by them for more than ten days. We not only ate tree bark and grass but also dirt. I remember once, when the situation got really bad and people were at their limits, I infiltrated the enemy's camp with my younger martial brother and stole the pig head that they had used as a sacrifice to the gods. We roasted it at campfire on the mountains. For the soldiers who hadn't eaten anything good for the past several days, eating a small piece of pig head meat was even more delicious than eating any exotic delicacy nowadays. The supervisor hurriedly interjected, General, you are wise and brilliant. Since you were able to survive such a terrible time, you absolutely will have a lot of fortune and blessings coming your way now. The Imperial Envoy burst out into straightforward laughter, whether or not I have future blessings coming my way, I don't really care. I'm extremely happy today. Do you know why? I finally found my master and younger martial brother, who I had lost touch with for over 30 years. Congratulations, my lord. Congratulations, my lord. This is absolutely a fortunate event. The overseer seized the opportunity to flatter the man. The Lord Imperial Envoy faced the docks that was flanked on each side with simple and crude looking buildings. He commented. Did you already finish discussing the compensation that will be given to those whose shacks will be demolished? The Emperor himself has said that the construction of the port is an important matter that will benefit both the country and his people. We absolutely cannot do anything that will make the commoners complain and resent this. The Emperor is a wise ruler who loves the commoners as his own children. This lowly one admires him adoringly the supervisor hastily expressed his feelings of loyalty. The Imperial Envoy ignored his attempts at flattery and continued, save your breath on these empty phrases, less talk and more action, the harbour pathway needs to be widened by at least double its current width and the shacks on both sides need to be torn down, I already have the money for compensating the people with me, so you need to discuss this carefully with the commoners, yes, yes, this lowly one will absolutely do this in such a way that you will be satisfied, the supervisor nodded his head furiously, as if he was trying to pound garlic paste with his chin. The Imperial Envoy waved his hand and strolled forward as he said, it's not enough to make me satisfied, you need to make sure the commoners are pleased too. Naturally, those who wish to gouge us should not be given full reign. Lee Li, you should provide your assistance too. This lowly one's surname is Liang. The overseer bowed and nodded his head with a bright smile on his face. Okay, you should assist Supervisor Liang with this matter. The Lord Imperial Envoy inspected the situation around the docks as he slowly walked towards the coast. The number of people queuing up at the braised food cellars slowly decreased. Seemingly unawaringly, the Imperial Envoy and his subordinate arrived at Old Liu's noodle stand. Old Liu and his wife trembled in fear when they saw the man wearing an official's robe. They were so frightened that they couldn't talk. Old couple, don't be scared. I noticed that your business is quite good so I wanted to buy a bowl of noodles to try in front of the obviously scared old couple. The Lord Imperial Envoy did his best to relax his rough and frightening looking face into a genial smile. Unfortunately, the opposite effect occurred. His attempt at squeezing out a smile made him look even more fierce and threatening. Eh? Hey, aren't you aren't you brother Hans Marshall uncle? When Xiaokao saw that there were only four to five people left in line, she felt like she could finally take a breathe there. A familiar voice had hit her ears, so she twisted around to look. Ah, this large and brawny man who was wearing an official's robes with a kylin embroidered on it was Fang Zizen, 
who they had met by chance at the prefectural city. Why was he at the docks, and also wearing an official's robes at that? The Lord Imperial Envoy, Fang Sizen, looked calmly over. Eh? Wasn't this the younger daughter of the sworn brother of his martial brother, the little girl who was named Xiaokao? He looked a bit closer at her. I maybe his eyes were blurry, but there were surprisingly two Yuxia cows in front of him. My lord, you're not seeing things. They are actually twins. Unbeknownst to him, Fang Zizen had actually said his thoughts out loud. Fang Zizen looked at the copper pot in front of the two sisters. The contents of the pot bubbled furiously in a strong, fragrant smell continuously flowed into the air. He chuckled. Arxiakau. Apparently the famous one copper coin per portion of braised food at the docks is the product of your family's skills are. There wasn't a lot of braised food left in the pot. Xiaokao smiled sincerely at him. Yup. General Fang. Do you want to try some? Originally, Fang Zizen was not hungry, but after smelling the tantalizing aroma of the food, he couldn't help but smack his lips a bit. Okay ah, then I'll try some. Fang Zizen's other subordinate, Wu Yun, quietly reminded him, Lord, this food is made of pig intestines and offal. We don't know if they've been cleaned properly, so you can't possibly eat this. Before Wu Yun could finish his thought, his lord glared at him. Fang Zizen coldly snorted and said, Looks like you've been living the easy life for too long and forgot what it's like to be poor. I heard that the northwest border is quite lively. How about this general recommend you go there to toughen up a bit? Wu Yun had been promoted by Fang Zizen from the ranks and had experienced only a few battles before the country had become peaceful. Thus, he was not as familiar with the hardships and sacrifices of war as his lord. When he saw that his master's expression had turned cold, he didn't have the guts to continue. He was afraid that if he said any more, he would be fated to go to the border the next day. Old man, give me a bowl of braised noodle soup. Xiaokao, please cut Uncle Fang a plate of pig head meat. Fang Zizen lifted his official's robes up and sat on a stool that was missing a leg. Old Liu's mouth trembled. He wanted to say something but was too afraid to do so. He looked at Yu Xiaokao as a plea for help. Xiaokao happily replied, General Fang. The conditions at the docks are a bit crude. So Grandpa Liu doesn't prepare braised noodle soup here. How about you have him roll out some noodles for green vegetables and egg noodle soup? Green vegetables and egg noodle soup? No good. No good. Yesterday I ate some tomato and egg noodle soup at my master's house, and it was quite delicious. Fang Zizen smacked his lips as he reminisced. He had lived for more than 40 years and this was the first time he had heard of using wolf peaches as a dish. It was really quite delicious. He was mostly just mentioning it and didn't have much hope. Fortunately, Yuxiakao, whose family grew tomatoes, had conveniently picked a few ripe tomatoes as she was leaving to sell the food. She was originally planning on eating them when she felt thirsty, with tomatoes and eggs on hand. There was no need to worry whether they could make tomato and egg noodle soup, right? Old Yu had finally managed to squeeze out a sorry when Yu Xiaokao caught his eye with a bright smile on her face. She spoke to Fang Sizen, General Fang, if you feel it's okay, I can help you make this tomato and egg noodle soup for you. I'll first piece together a plate of braised food for you to eat. Within 15 minutes. The noodles should also be ready. A look of surprise appeared on Fang Zizen's face as he said, Are there really tomatoes around? Ah, I remember, the tomatoes we had yesterday at my master's house were sent from your family. Ha ha, then I really got lucky with food today. I heard that, when eaten raw, tomatoes have a sweet and sour taste that's quite good. Give me one so I can try right now. Xia Kao looked at the already washed tomatoes in her basket and chose the largest and reddest looking one. She placed into General Fang's hands and used the other two to chop into small cubes. Old Liu finally realized that the high ranking official in front of him wasn't that intimidating. Under Xia Kao's directions, he quickly rolled out a bunch of noodles. Xia Kao first put some lard into the pot with some chopped onions to let the flavors blossom. After that, she placed the chopped tomatoes into the hot oil and quickly stir-fried them until a thick soup appeared. Then, she poured the chicken eggs that she had already beaten into the pot. Once the eggs started to solidify, she lightly mixed the contents. Next, she added an appropriate amount of water and let it come to a boil before she placed the noodles inside. Once it boiled again, 
she added some salt and green vegetables, mixed it all up, and it was ready to be served. The tomato and egg noodle soup was brightly colored and had a rich scent. It attracted the looks of many people around them. Which worker on the docks had ever seen a tomato before? One after another, they all asked Old Yu the name of the dish as well as the price. Old Yu looked at Yu Xiaokao and hesitated before he replied, The tomatoes came from Xiaokao. I've lived for a long time but I've never seen this type of food before. It's probably not cheap. Right? Yuxiakao nodded and agreed, tomatoes are indeed not cheap. For good ones, there are around dozens of copper coins for a catty. This bowl of tomato and egg noodle soup probably costs around 30 to 40 copper coins for the ingredients and work alone. If any uncles around here want to try, you can reserve some in advance with Grandpa Liu. Over there, Fang's eyes and had already impatiently started to eat. The scorching hot temperature caused him to sharply breathe in cold air but he still couldn't bear to split out the boiling hot noodles from his mouth. After a mouthful of noodles went down, he closed his eyes contently and repeatedly complimented her. Xiaokao ah, you really are talented. This bowl of tomato and egg noodle soup is even more delicious than the one I had yesterday at my master's house. Your uncle Fang is a rough person so I don't know how to use pretty words to describe this, however, it really is very delicious. As he talked, he used his chopsticks to pick up another portion of noodles and carefully blew air on them before he ate them in large mouthfuls. Other people around them couldn't help but swallow some saliva down as the way he ate demonstrated just how delicious these noodles were. Wu Yun took the opportunity to take the remaining few strands of noodles in the pot and place it in a bowl with half of the soup broth in it. He drank the contents in large gulps. The Lord got to eat the noodles but at least he was able to drink some soup. Once the noodles soup hit his tongue, the slightly sour and savory flavor of broth spread throughout his mouth. It tasted so good that he almost wanted to cry. After he ate more than half of the bowl of noodles, Fang Zizen finally had a desire to try the braised food platter that Xiaokao had sliced for him. Whether it was the soft and full of flavor pig head meat, or crispy pig ears, or the intestines that made people's mouths fill with delectable oil. They were all considered to be top-notch delicacies. Even the kelp and dried tofu had their own distinctive and delicious flavor. Fang Zizen had been an official for many years and had traveled extensively. Thus, he had tried many so-called delicacies before. However, none of those delicacies apparently had the flavor of these deceptively simple braised ingredients that suited him more. Although he previously wasn't very hungry. Fang Zizen managed to polish off a huge bowl of noodle soup along with the entire platter of braised food. He rubbed at his stuffed belly and didn't stint on his praise. Ah, your skills are quite good. I would have never expected that you, Xiaokao, at such a young age, would be able to cook so well. This braised food is even more delicious than the ones served at Zenxiu restaurant in town. The flavor can compete with their roasted chicken and salted duck. Xiolian giggled, Lord, you must not know that the braised food at Zenxiu restaurant was made from a recipe that our family sold to them. She also wanted to mention that the roasted chicken and osman the stuck were also recipes that Xiaokao developed but she had been stopped by her younger sister yanking on the hem of her jacket. After she got the hint, she only mentioned the braised food. No wonder, apparently your family's braised food is the most authentic one ah. Uh, Fang Zizen was in an extremely good mood. Chapter 147, Goddaughter, at this time, the supervisor jogged over, wiped the sweat on his forehead, and smiled flatteringly, Lord Imperial Envoy, according to the scale of the expansion of the harbor and the estimated construction period, we will need a large number of masons and construction workers. What do you have to ask me about such a trifling matter? Then what do I need you supervisors for? Fang Zizen had a straightforward temperament, and always spoke bluntly to vile people who only knew how to curry favors and don't do any practical work. But the supervisor wasn't someone completely without merit either. He was just uncertain about the temperament of the imperial envoy who was sent over, so he didn't dare act recklessly. Since he was willing to delegate power to him, what worries would he still have? When Yuxiakao heard that they needed masons for the harbor construction, she immediately thought of her youngest maternal uncle. Her youngest maternal uncle didn't have any other abilities, but he was even more skilled as a mason than a carpenter. Since brother Han's martial uncle was in charge of this matter, 
It would be a waste to not use this connection. General Fang. What General Fang? You make it seem like we're strangers. With your family's relationship with my martial younger brother, you can just call me Uncle Fang. Fang Zizen was quite cordial towards this bright and clever young girl. Yuxia Kao also didn't act courteous with him anymore and smiled even sweeter, Uncle Fang. Xia Kao has a small matter, which I would like to ask you for a little help with. How small is this small matter? Fang Zizen teased her. Yuxia Kao glanced at the supervisor and deliberately whispered into his ears. In fact, she spoke in a voice that could be heard by the people around them. Uncle Fang, the construction of the new harbor must require a lot of workers. Right? Are these people sent from above, or are they recruited on site? Fang Zizen also deliberately lowered his voice and spoke in a secretive manner. The Ministry of Works sent several people over, but except for this, everyone else will be recruited on site. Why? You have family who wants to work at the docks. The supervisor had a lot of doubts within his heart regarding the relationship between the Imperial Envoy and the fisherman's daughter who sold braised food at the docks but he could tell that the Imperial Envoy treated the little girl like she was a child of his family. The smooth and slick supervisor naturally knew what to do. He listened attentively and heard Xia Kao say with slight embarrassment, Uncle Fang, my youngest maternal uncle is very good with masonry work. There aren't any villagers in the surrounding villages who don't know this. I heard that he had also came to look for work at the docks. Perhaps you can test him. Fang Zizen raised his eyebrow and gave the supervisor a look. Then the supervisor tactfully said, What's the to test? Would there even be anything wrong with someone that Miss Xiaokao recommended? Do you see that new hut over there? Later, just tell your youngest uncle to go there directly. I will be there registering the new recruits. Yuxiakao waved at Liu Ziwai and told him, who had jogged over, oldest cousin, do you know where youngest uncle is? Tell him to come over quickly and go register with this sir. Registration? For what? Liu Ziwai couldn't think straight for a moment as he looked cautiously at the official's robe that General Fang and his subordinates were wearing. Yuxia Kao glared at him and said, of course it's the registration for the recruitment of masons. Just go, why are you asking so many questions? If you mess up this matter, just see if youngest uncle will spare you. Liu Ziwai took another look at the officials present and widened his eyes, oh my god, little sister Xia Kao actually has connections with the officials in charge of the construction of the harbor. Tsi Tsi, little sister Xia Kao is seriously too bold to be able to keep a straight face in front of all these officials. If I were in her place, I probably wouldn't even dare to say a word. But, the most surprising thing was the fact that little sister Xia Kao actually had some face in front of the officials. What exactly is going on? Although Yu Ziwai had thousands of questions in his heart, he still managed to hold back perplexed feelings and swiftly ran off to find his youngest paternal uncle. He knew very clearly what this job meant to his youngest uncle and his family. It would definitely take at least three to five years to complete the harbor construction, which meant that his youngest uncle would have a stable income for the next three to five years. He would have a stable job. He had heard that the emperor attached great importance on the construction of the harbor and sent an imperial envoy to supervise the progress of the construction. There had been a rumor at the docks that workers who participated in the construction of the harbor could have a salary that was no less than the porters on the docks. Many of the dock workers were interested in job and were preparing to try out at the recruitment site. Liu Ziwai pulled out his youngest paternal uncle from the crowd in front of the recruitment hut. Liu Hao was working hard to squeeze his way to the front because the chance of being recruited would increase if he was closer to the front. However, the people enlisting were all burly men who were used to heavy manual labor. He didn't have a strong built figure, so how would he be able to squeeze through the crowd? Liu Hao, who was abruptly pulled out by his nephew, said with a displeased face, Zai Wai, what are you doing? I finally managed to squeeze into the middle but ended up being dragged out by you. All my efforts have been wasted. What exactly is the matter? Quickly say it. Youngest uncle stop trying to squeeze into the crowd. Little sister Xia Kao used her connections for you, so you can just directly go meet the person in charge of recruiting workers. Liu Ziwai pulled his youngest uncle further away from the crowd and whispered with excitement. After being delighted for a moment, Liu Hao pulled a long face again and said, Don't joke with youngest uncle. 
How would Xiaokano supervisor Jiang, even if she knows him, why would supervisor Jiang give face to a little girl like her? Seeing that he didn't believe him, Liu Ziwei slightly anxiously said, youngest uncle, how could I possibly joke around with this matter? Either it's real or not, wouldn't you know when you go over? Hurry up, or else the lords might get impatient from waiting and leave. Liu Hao was still skeptical as he followed his nephew to old Liu's noodle stall. When he arrived, he saw a high-ranking official, who was dressed in an official's robe and sitting uninhibitedly on a stool, happily chatting with his niece. Supervisor Zhang, whom he recognized, was accompanying them with a smile. When had he ever seen Supervisor Zhang being so fawning? Supervisor Zhang was in charge of recruiting workers, so he had always acted arrogantly towards the people who came to apply for work and never had serious regard for them. At this time, that usually snobby and arrogant person was actually listening to his niece with a broad smile. Had he not seen it with his own eyes, he seriously wouldn't have believed it. Greetings, my lords. I shall pay my respects to your excellencies. Liu Hao had worked in town before, so he was more knowledgeable than the farmers who only worked hard in the fields. He disregarded the doubts in his heart and bobbed a greeting to the lords first. Fang's eyes and carefully examined him, and then nodded. Okay, not bad. He's a fine looking man. I heard that you're skilled in masonry. This commoner doesn't dare accept your excellency's praise. This commoner began learning under a mason in town at the age of 14, and it has been 15 years now. Liu Hao could tell that he was the highest ranking official among the three people and answered respectfully. Fang's eyes and commended, not arrogant nor rash and answers in an appropriate manner. He is obviously someone who can do practical work. Little Jiang, what do you think? Your Excellency has foresight. This lowly one is full of respect. Ah. Supervisor Jiang didn't forget to fawn over him again before he asked a few more questions regarding construction. Liu Hao carefully answered them one by one. Supervisor Jiang was also quite satisfied and said, sure enough. The person recommended by Miss Xiaokao is very good. All right, you can work under me in the future. Do you know how to write? When this slowly one was young, I was able to attend an academy for several years. Although I hadn't studied a lot, I'm able to recognize some words. As for my writing, it might not look very good. Liu humbly replied. Supervisor Jiang seemed rather satisfied with his sense of propriety. He said with a beaming face. We're not taking the imperial examination, so why would we need to have beautiful handwriting? Come, go to the register at the recruitment hut. Little you are. Do you know any masons? You can also introduce them to this job. After all, it's better to use people who are familiar with the work than people who have never done it before. Youngest maternal uncle's matter was easily settled just like that. Taking General Fang into account. The supervisor probably wouldn't make things difficult for her youngest maternal uncle, right? Yuxiakao looked at Liu Hao and Supervisor Jiang's back view and revealed a contented smile. Fang's eyes and had a smile on his face from the beginning to the end. He really liked this little girl with excellent cooking skills. Fang's eyes and was already almost 50 years old and had gotten married after he settled down. However, he might have ended up with an internal injury after years of war expeditions because he was still childless when he was nearly fifty. His wife had urged him many times to take in several concubines, but he refused. The emperor had sent imperial physicians to examine his and his wife's pulse on many occasions, but they always made the same conclusion. The problem wasn't with his wife, but him. Although the imperial physician had advised that he should be able to improve with attentive treatment. However, he gradually lost hope after so many years. Fortunately, his younger martial brother had gotten married early and had a son at a young age. In the future, his little martial nephew would be the same as his own son. He would definitely use all his connections and do his best to foster him. With his martial nephew's talents, his future achievements definitely wouldn't be below his. He was childless so it was inevitable that he would pay more attention to children who were more sensible and interesting. For example, his martial nephew and also this adult-like little girl in front of him. Xiaokao ah, would you like to be Uncle Fang's daughter? Fang's eyes and had an urge in his heart, 
and then made a decision. Wu Yun widened his eyes and felt extremely anxious within his heart. The general was a third rank official and someone that the emperor trusted and relied on. As long as he opened his mouth to say that he wanted to take in a godson or goddaughter, numerous officials in the capital would line up and send their children over. How could he? How could he just accept a little farmer girl as his goddaughter because of a bowl of noodles and a plate of braised food? He blinked his eyes and twitched his mouth in an attempt to hint his disagreement. Seeing that it didn't work, he openly expressed, My lord, this matter perhaps it would be better to wait until you return to the capital and discuss this matter with your wife before making a decision. Fang's eyes and appeared gallant and imposing, and he made enemies tremble in fear in the battlefield just by hearing his name. But he was somewhat henpecked at home. Though it may seem like he was henpecked, it wasn't necessarily true. He was merely more considerate to his wife and respected his wife a little more than others. Fang's eyes and slanted his eyes to look at his trusted subordinate and said, My wife wants a goddaughter even more than me. Xiaokao is smart and clever, and also sensible and obedient. My wife will definitely like her when she sees her. If another person had heard that a third-ranked official wanted to take her in as his goddaughter, she would have been elated and agreed a long time ago. But Xiaokao wasn't an ordinary person. She was someone who was able to calmly refuse the Emperor Emeritus' suggestion to take her as his granddaughter, let alone a mid-third-ranked official. Chapter 148, Godfather. Xiaokao's smile became a little more sincere. Although she had a decent impression of Brother Han's martial uncle, she still firmly declined. Uncle Fang, thank you for your affections. However, I still can't accept your kindness. What? It's the blessing of several generations for the general to think highly of a little peasant girl like you. Yet you actually dared to reject him? Wu Yun instantly felt indignant for his lord, little girl, if you agreed, you will be the young miss of a third rank general's family. You won't have to sell braised food and farm any more. Ah. You can just live a comfortable and leisurely life. In the future, you can also marry the son of an official. Not just anyone can get this lifestyle. You have to think carefully. Yuxia Kao didn't know whether she should laugh or cry as she looked at him and said, This uncle, weren't you just obscurely opposing this idea? Why are you suddenly trying to persuade me? You're seriously so fickle. With a displeased expression, Wu Yun said, It's one thing whether my lord accepts you, but it's another thing for you to decline. For what reason are you refusing? My lord is a brilliant master of martial arts, and has great merits in war. The madam is affable and kind as well as gentle and refined. This is a good opportunity that only occurs once in a lifetime. Yuxiakao looked at him with a smile and said firmly, My father is honest and kind. He loves and cherishes me and my siblings. Furthermore, he listens to me and does everything that I want. My mother is gentle and considerate, and she loves me to her bones. I am very glad to be born into this kind of a family, and I also feel very fortunate to have parents and siblings like them. Though Yuxia Kao's eyes were brimming with tears, she still had a smile on her little face, which appeared bright and graceful under the sunlight, when I was young. I often fell ill. My parents were the ones who disregarded themselves and did their best to take care of me in every possible way. They devoted all their energy to me. If I abandoned my parents who loved and pampered me because I wanted to be rich, then am I still someone worthy of your attention, Uncle Fang? When Xiolian heard Fang's eyes and say that he wanted Xiaokao to be his adopted daughter, she held her younger sister's hand tightly afraid that her younger sister would be snatched away if she loosened her grip. When she heard Wu Yun state the benefits of being the general's goddaughter, she felt hesitant within her heart. She wanted her younger sister to have a good future, but she was also reluctant to part with her younger sister, whom she was accustomed to taking care of and protecting. Hot tears welled up in her eyes when she heard Xiaokao's words of refusal and reason for declining. She felt proud to have such a younger sister. She didn't pamper her in vain. When Fang's eyes and heard Xiaokao's words, he laughed even more heartily. What a good child. I wasn't wrong about you. I just want to take you as my goddaughter, not snatch you away from your family. You can continue living with your family and your parents are still your parents. You will just have some adoptive relatives. Don't overthink it. Tonight, I will go to your house and talk to your parents about it, 
so prepare a good meal. I'll bring the good wine that was awarded to me by the emperor and have a good drink with your father. Xiolian still had doubts, so she summoned her courage and asked, Are you telling the truth? You won't take away my parents' daughter? Of course. What kind of person do you guys take me as? I may look like a bandit, but I have never robbed or plundered anyone. Rest assured, your younger sister will just have a new set of godparents. Fang Zizen was very touched by the affections between the sisters and felt even more impressed by how Yu Hai and his wife taught their children. As long as she didn't have to leave her parents and her whole family could live together happily, Yu Xiaokao didn't oppose the idea of having a godfather. In the future, her family certainly wouldn't be confined to this small village. Thus, it would probably somehow benefit them in the future if she had a powerful and influential godfather. Right? Yuxia Cow put the last bit of braised food on a plate and gave it to Wu Yun, who had been staring at Uncle Fang's braised food for a long time. Wu Yun looked at her, swallowed his saliva as he looked at the dish of braised food, and then proudly said, I won't be bribed just because of a plate of braised food. Who would want to bribe you? What are the benefits of bribing you? I'm just giving Uncle Fang face and expressing my concern and sympathy to his subordinates. It's already noon. Aren't you tired from running around? Uncle Lee, quickly ate some food to fill your stomach. Yuxia Kao inwardly laughed at his difficult temperament, and waved her hand at Li Li, who was walking over from a distance. Li Li helped maintain order at the recruitment site. He was so busy that his face was covered in sweat and his stomach was rumbling from hunger. At this time, old Liu brought over a full bowl of green vegetables noodles. He took it conveniently and poured a small portion of the braised food into his bowl. He didn't care that it was scalding and started slurping up the food. Wu Yun frowned and yelled in exasperation, that's my noodles. All right, little chestnut, one. You actually dared to steal your older brother Wu's noodles and braised food. How irritating. Yuda, too, you're too petty. I've been working for half of the day and was extremely busy. You're just sitting here and chatting with the Lord. So can't you just let me eat first? Okay, okay. This braised food tastes really good. Is this pork tripe? I like it. Li Li put some more of the braised food into his bowl and ate with relish. Wu Yun got irritated and swiftly grabbed the plate that only had half a plate of braised food remaining. He angrily said, How many times have I told you? Stop calling me Wuda. The little girl gave the braised food to me. Are you a bandit? Don't you call me little chestnut? Why can't I call you Wuda? Hey, Wuda, you're getting more and more stingy. I just ate a few pieces of your braised food, so why are you acting like I'm cutting your flesh? There wasn't much noodles left in Li Li's bowl. He gulped down everything, including the soup, in a few mouthfuls and burped in satisfaction. Wu Yun's noodles was just served at this time. He slowly picked up a few strands of noodles and carefully blew on them before he stuffed them into his mouth. He bit off the longer noodle strands and then carefully chewed. After that, he picked up a piece of pig head meat and hesitated for a moment before he placed it into his mouth. When the pig head meat entered his mouth, he paused for a second, and then he chewed a little faster. Beside him, Li Li's mouth twitched and said, Watching you eat seriously makes me anxious. You're eating like a little lady. Then should I eat like you, who acts like you're the reincarnation of a hungry ghost, in order to be considered a man? That's called being boorish, okay? This little lord is a cultivated general, so I won't lower myself to be the same level as a rude person like you. Wu Yun glared at him and then continued to eat the delicious braised food. Although he didn't say anything, it was obvious that he was very satisfied with the braised food. Fang Zizen laughed merrily as he watched his two subordinates bickering. These two fellows had liked to quarrel with each other since they were young soldiers. It had been nearly two decades, but they still liked to argue whenever they got the chance. But he was also aware that if one of them was bullied, then the other would risk his life to help him. It seemed that bickering was just a way for them to improve their friendship. With a hint of a smile in his gaze, he looked towards Xiaokao and her sister, who were currently packing up their pots and dishes, and asked, Xiaokao, are you getting ready to go back? I'm going to the small market on that side of the docks to see if there's any Huangdan powder. I also need to go to the construction site over there to see if I can find some quicklime. Yuxia Kao packed up the small mud stove, 
and then put all the dishes and what not into old Liu's noodles stall. In this way, they wouldn't have to bring them back and forth, and thus save them a lot of trouble. Old Liu and his wife were good-natured people. They had gotten a lot more business since Xiaokao's family started selling braised food beside them. Right now, dock workers earned a decent daily salary. On a good day, they could earn over a hundred copper coins. On the docks, they could eat until their bellies were round with just a few copper coins. Most of the dock workers didn't mind spending a couple of coins, and there were fewer and fewer people bringing dried rations to the docks. The taste of Xiaokao's family's braised food was universally acknowledged to be good. After buying the braised food, they would also conveniently order a bowl of noodles and enjoy their meal while sitting. As a result, it also boosted the business of Old Liu's noodles stall, and Old Liu became one of the most popular food vendors at the docks. The lady boss of another noodles stall on the docks was full of regret. Had she not driven Xiaokao away from her stall at that time, she would have been the one who sold dozens of bowls of noodles every day. She had also quietly gone to find Xiolian and asked her to sell braised food next to her stall. However, she had been rejected by Xiolian with the excuse that she was afraid the dock workers wouldn't be able to find them and that they would lose their customers. The lady boss's husband had also quarreled with her a few times for this reason. When Fang eyes and heard that Xiaokao wanted to buy Huangdan powder, he curiously asked, Why are you buying Huangdan powder? Do you need to use Huangdan powder as a seasoning when making braised food? Yu Xiaokao shook her head and said, Although Huangdan powder can be used to reduce phlegm, relieve convulsion, and treat mouth ulcer, dysentery, and other illnesses, but it can't be used as a seasoning. It's easy to get lead poisoning if one consumes too much Huangdan powder. Ha, ha. Those Taoist priests also use Huangdan powder to make pills. The emperor once said that the pills made by Taoist priests are inedible because there's lead in it. Xiaokao's viewpoint coincides perfectly with the emperor's R. Fang's eyes and immediately felt that Xiaokao was very smart, to know the same things as the emperor. The corner of Yu Xiaokao's mouth twitched slightly. It was seriously very stressful to have such a powerful and high-ranking fellow transmigrator R. If it's not a seasoning, then what do you need Huangdan powder for? To treat an illness? Fang's eyes and seemed very relaxed as he chatted leisurely with the little girl. To make century eggs. Yu Xiaokao answered nonchalantly. Fang Zifeng sat up with great interest and asked, Song Wu eggs, three? I have heard of chicken eggs, duck eggs, goose eggs. What kind of egg is a Song Wu egg? Eggs laid by a Song Wu? Is there a bird called Song Wu? Uncle Fang, you have such a wild imagination, ah. Century eggs are duck eggs made with a special process. There are pine like patterns on it, so it was named Song Wu eggs. Yuxia Cow finished packing up and patted the dust on her body. She picked up the basket and prepared to try her luck at the small market. Fang eyes and also stood up and said to Wu Yun, Go help Miss Yu find the quicklime. I'll go inspect the small market. Wu Yun grumbled in his heart, Inspect. What high sounding words. You just want to follow the little girl and find out what kind of a delicacy century eggs are. Wu Yun followed his order and went to look for quicklime. Xia Cow, Xiolian, and a huge Tagalong, General Fang Sizen, slowly headed towards the small market. The small market on the wharf was a little market formed spontaneously in an open space. There were low shacks on both sides, which were shops at the market. There were also many stalls selling small goods. Due to a lack of management, the whole market looked dirty and chaotic, and had piles of debris and rubbish on the ground. Yuxiaka shook her head inwardly. There really needed to be some regulations. After the construction of the harbor was completed, there would definitely be proper roads, stores, and a marketplace. There would be people specially assigned to manage this place. It seemed like the construction of the port was indeed a matter that benefited the country and the people. One, little chestnut, comma pun on Lee Lee's, comma name since equals Lee. Two, Nuda, comma D A, comma equals Big. Three, Songwa. Comma equals pine flower, chapter 149, becoming family. At the small market at the docks, there was only one simple shop selling medicinal herbs. There were very few kinds of herbs in the shop, and the quality of the herbs were not very good. Of course, the price was also quite cheap. Fortunately, 
Huangdan powder wasn't a rare medicinal herb. Yu Xiaokao bought 20 copper coins worth of Huangdan powder at the pharmacy that seemed like it would be blown down by a gust of wind. After that, she also bought some soda ash at a nearby general store. After thinking about it, Yu Xiaokao asked Fang Sizen, who had been following her and asking all sorts of questions, Uncle Fang, do you have any black tea? It doesn't have to be really good quality. Average quality will do. Fang's eyes increased his brows and thought about it. Then he shook his head and replied, I'm a rough man, so I don't know anything about tea. Isn't drinking wine more pleasurable than drinking tea? Yuxia Kao hung her head in slight disappointment. She had thought that she could save some money since the price of tea wasn't low after all. Seeing her look like a frozen eggplant that had withered, Fang's eyes and felt slightly bad and said, I'll help ask little Jiang for you later. That fellow seems like someone who likes to pose as a culture lover. If he doesn't have it, he will still be able to find it for you. Xiaokao, do you like to drink black tea? Next time, if the emperor rewards me with tea, I definitely won't reject it. Xiaokao was amused by him. She chuckled and said, the black tea isn't for me to drink. I need to use it to make century eggs. With black tea. The century eggs will taste even better. It's used to make century eggs. Okay, okay. Uncle will definitely get it for you. Ali, go ask little Jang if he can get some black tea. The sooner, the better. Fang Zizan seemed even more anxious than Xiaokao. After giving his order, he asked Xiaokao, how long does it take to make century eggs? Will I be able to eat it tonight? Yu Xiaokao looked at him with a radiant smile, slowly shook her head, and said, Uncle Fang, you should forget about eating century eggs tonight. It takes at least 20 days or so to complete the entire process of making century eggs. If the weather is cold, I'm afraid that it might take even longer. Fang Zizen looked disappointed and sighed softly, it takes more than 20 days ah. It's alright. I, your uncle, am in charge of supervising the progress of the harbor construction, so I probably won't leave within the next 2 or 3 years. There are plenty of opportunities in the future. Did you get all the ingredients? Go, let's go back to Dongshan village. Uncle Fang, aren't you here to supervise the progress of the construction? What time is it right now? Aren't you leaving too early? Yuxia Kao was in a good mood after buying all the ingredients, and joked with Fang Zizan. Fang Zizan chortled and said, I'm not the supervisor, who needs to sit at the docks every day. Moreover, isn't there Li Li and Wu Yun? The disciples will handle all the work. Those two brats aren't my disciples, but I watched them grow up. They should be able to handle doing some trivial matters for me. With Fang's eyes and riding on a tall and big horse and Juxia Kao driving the little donkey cart, they traveled slowly and leisurely on the road back to the village. Fang's eyes and was a complete chatterbox, who had one question after another and thus they weren't lonely on the way back. When they returned to Dongshan village, Fang Zizan didn't rush back to his master's house, but instead, followed Xiaokao and her sister back to the family's old residence first, under the old elm tree, as if she was afraid that others would hear her. Madame Xun moved closer and whispered into Madame Li's ears, Giwa, your second brother-in-law is seriously amazing. First, he fawned over the third young master of the Zi family and became the sole vegetables supplier for Zenxiu restaurant. This time he's currying favor with some government official. Based on the color and pattern of his official's gown, he's probably not some low-ranking official. I wonder who has the higher rank between him and the county magistrate? The county magistrate was the highest-ranking official that Madame Xun had seen. If the short-sighted have found out that Fang Zizan's title of Zoyong General was several levels higher than the county magistrate's rank, then she probably wouldn't even dare to speak. Li Giwa smirked and spat a thick phlegm on the ground and said, I didn't notice in the past but this second brother-in-law is really a money grubber. What's that saying again? Separate separate something pay something. Isn't it curry favor with those in power? Madame Xun inwardly ridiculed Li Giwa for being uncultured. Yes, that's the phrase. What abilities does that second brother-in-law of mine have? He's not even worthy of holding other people's shoes. How did he even manage to get in their favor? Just watch. Do you think that it's really that easy cling on to an official? He will probably get annoyed one day and chop all their heads off. 
Madam Li said sourly. Madam Xiong suddenly thought of something and said, Giwa, didn't you say that your family's Haizi is filial and wanted to go to the docks to earn some money for you to spend? Didn't Xiaokao just return from the docks? Why don't you go ask about it? Ask them, what will they know? Have you not seen my son's figure before? He's full of strength so there's no way he can't find a job. I heard that the dock workers earn quite a lot now. They can earn dozens of copper coins every day with a problem. Madame Lee beamed with joy and had a smug expression on her face. Madame Xun's mouth twitched and thought, your son's figure, with a body of fat? He pants like a cow after walking a few steps. What would he be able to do? While the two spoke ill of others in a seemingly compatible manner, Xiaokao and the others had already arrived home. Yuhai was stunned by the official's robe on Fang's eyes and didn't recognize him for a moment. He murmured in his heart, Why did they bring an official here? Fang's eyes and greeted him first, Younger brother you, what's wrong? You don't recognize this older brother just after a night? It's me, Bufan's older martial brother. Yuhai looked like he had a sudden realization, so it's General Fang. Quick! Come inside the house to sit. No need, I want to see how century eggs are made. Fang Zizen stood in the courtyard and saw all kinds of vegetables growing vigorously in the yard. The yard was clean and tidy, and all the items were arranged in an orderly way. He inwardly nodded his head. Century eggs. Oh, that's a novel food our family's Xiaokao is preparing to make. I wonder what the finished product will be like. Yuhai looked at his younger daughter with a hint of a smile in his eyes, and his heart was full of pride. Yuhang brought out a stool from inside the house and placed it beside General Fang. He said softly and politely, General Fang, please sit. Is this your eldest son? Sure enough, he's a fine-looking boy. Younger brother you, I really envy you for having these wonderful children. Fang's eyes and patted Yuhang's shoulder and then lifted his official's robe and sat down. His tone was filled with sorrow. Yu Hai laughed and said, General Fang, you're flattering me. With a father like you, the general, your children will surely have good prospects. Father Yu Xiaokao blinked at her father. Based on what she heard from Wu Yun and General Fang's conversations, she had learned that General Fang didn't have any children, so she was afraid that her father would poke at his sore spot. Fang's eyes and was even more satisfied with this clever little girl. He waved his hand and said, there's nothing that can't be said. I fought in wars when I was young and ended up with an unmentionable disease. I'm afraid that it will be very difficult for me to have any children in this lifetime. Brother you, to tell you the truth. I really like your younger daughter. I want to become nominal relatives with you and adopt Xiaokao as my daughter. Would brother you be willing to agree? Although the kind Yuhai didn't really want to share his daughter with someone else, he pitied Fang and for being childless. Moreover, the other party solemnly declared that he wasn't trying to take his daughter away from him. He hesitated for a long time, but still ended up agreeing. Hence, Yuxiakao now had a third rank general as her godfather. After Yuxiakao solemnly served him tea and acknowledged him as her godfather, she began her attempt to make century eggs. Fang's eyes and watched with interest beside her. Yuxiakao first mixed salt, white lime, loess, and plant ash into a mud like matter. Then, she added an appropriate amount of black tea and huangdan powder into the mud like matter. After that, she wrapped the fresh duck eggs with the mud-like matter and covered each of them evenly in battered straw and rice husk. After she wrapped each of them securely with an oiled paper, she placed all of them on top of the warm kang bed. As it turned out, for the watermelon breeding, they had also heated up the kang bed in the west room, which was unoccupied. In the warm environment, the production time of the century eggs would be shortened. There was extra of the mud-like matter left over. So Xiaokao got several chicken eggs from the kitchen. Century eggs made with chicken eggs were bright and transparent, like a fine yellow jade. It tasted cool and refreshing, and it was fragrant but not greasy. In her past life, Xiaokao really liked eating the ones with a sweet filling, which had an even softer and smoother mouth feel. That's it? Fang Sizen, who had also followed Xiaokao and personally made several century eggs didn't think that it was very difficult. That's right. It's just that easy. It should be ready to eat in twenty or so days. Xiaokao nodded. After she said that, she stood up and went to help prepare lunch in the kitchen. With this great lord here, 
they definitely couldn't just casually make two dishes. Fang's eyes and also realized that his visit was too abrupt and felt rather embarrassed. So he stood up and said, don't prepare my meal. This morning, I told my master that I will return for lunch. Brother Yu, I will come have a good drink with you in the evening. Yu Hai graciously urged him to stay. General Fang, it's already noon. How can we just let you leave without eating? Everything at home is ready made, so it's all very easy to make. Fang's eyes and interjected, Brother Yu, why are you still calling me General Fang? You're treating me like an outsider. I'm several years older than you, so you can just call me Older Brother Fang. Yu Hai rubbed his hands and chuckled, Fang, Older Brother Fang, all right. I can't let my master wait or else I will be punished to stand on a stake. Tonight, I'll come over with Xio Fan, the three of us needs to have a good drink. Daughter, when the construction at the docks are completed, Godfather will take you to visit our residence in the capital. Your godmother will definitely be happy to have a goddaughter like you. The capital? If she had a chance, Xia Kao Long wanted to visit the capital. In her previous life, she had stayed in a small county town and devoted herself to raising her younger siblings. Had she not visited her younger siblings, who had worked and settled in a big city, it would probably be very difficult for her to walk out of the small county town during that lifetime. Thus, it was even more unlikely for her to have a chance to visit the capital. In this lifetime, she hoped she would be able to make up for the regrets she had in her previous life. She wanted to visit the capital and have the opportunity to look at the elegant demeanor of the imperial city. Of course, if that fellow transmigrator wasn't in the capital, she would anticipate it even more. In the evening, Yuxia Kao took her new godfather's likings into consideration and made soy braised pork with the perfect ratio of fatty and lean meat. It was fragrant and soft and just melted within one's mouth. She also used the big head carp within the vat to make the colorful and pungent steamed fish head with chili pepper, which had a tender texture. After picking out the bones, the rest of the fish was battered into paste and used to make fish balls soup. There was also stir-fried lettuce with oyster sauce, scrambled eggs with tomatoes, eggplant with minced garlic. Fang Zizen felt that he had never been so happy before as he ate the food personally cooked by his goddaughter, drank the wine that the emperor awarded to him, and chatted with two like-minded brothers. He looked at his dear daughter who was busy like a bee and felt a sense of satisfaction of everything was well with a daughter. Chapter 150, Weirdo, Xia Kao had a general and imperial envoy as her a new godfather, but there wasn't much change to her current lifestyle. She had always kept a low profile when doing doings so no one in Dongshan village knew that Yuxia Kao had such a powerful godfather, except for the Yu family at the old residence and the Zhao family. At the beginning, Yu Hai and Madame Liu still acted very cautiously in front of General Fang. Later, under their daughter's influence, they were also able to face him in a calm manner. Now, everyone had already treated the bold and unrestrained General Fang, who often came to eat at their house, as a relative. In a blink of an eye, a month had already gone by. Under the warming weather and lovely spring days, the vegetation on the West Mountains radiated with vitality. In Xia Kao's family's three plots of farmland, the watermelon vines had extended, and the green leaves appeared as if they had been dyed. There were small, light yellow watermelon flowers on the melon vines. Some of the female flowers already bore tiny, green watermelons. Yuxia Kao carried a small wooden bucket and held a ladle in another hand. Yu Hang, who had already recovered, carried a load of water on his not so broad shoulders and followed behind his younger sister. Xia Kao looked back and saw the dense beads of sweat on her older brother's forehead. Her heart somewhat ached for him. Older brother, if you're tired, take a break. I reckon we should just borrow Uncle Zhu's wheelbarrow. We just need to make four or five trips and we will have enough to water the watermelon fields. Had father not driven the donkey cart to the docks, we wouldn't have to go through this trouble. It's not troublesome, isn't it just carrying a few loads of water? Our buckets are all a small size that was specially made by father, so how heavy can they be? It's so much easier than when I had to move timber. Yu Hang smiled at his younger sister, and his handsome face showed a healthy glow because he was carrying water. What a handsome young man. I isn't this Xia Shaw and Xia Kao? Are you guys going to water the fields again? Tell Uncle Wang, 
What exactly are you guys planting in your fields? The flowers look quite beautiful. Wang Ergu, who had been forced by his wife to come water the fields, asked with a grin. There was little rain this spring. Fortunately, there was a stream flowing through Dongshan village, which flowed down from the west mountains. Even in the dry season, the stream rarely stopped flowing. Thus, it was more convenient for the villagers of Dongshan village to get water and irrigate their farmland than villagers of other villages. The siblings were familiar with his personality. If they didn't tell him, he might come back to visit their melon field tonight. Although there wasn't anything to steal right now, she would be distressed if he trampled on the melon seedlings. With a sweet smile on her face, Xia Kao said, Uncle Wang, our family is growing watermelons, which is a kind of fruit. It's very valuable. The flowers just started blooming now. Uncle Wang, your family lives closer, so please us keep an eye on them. Don't let those naughty children harm them. Wang Ergu's eyes darted around, and then he nodded solemnly, as fellow villagers, even if you didn't ask me, I would still help you guys look after them. Xia Kao, what does this watermelon thing look like? Is it tasty? Uncle Wang has never heard of it. Ayo, who's twisting my ear? He turned around and saw his family's tigress glaring at him with her hands on her waist. The anger on his face disappeared in a flash and he smiled flatteringly at her. Wife. Why did you pull on my ear? Am I not working right now? I didn't loaf on the job. Erga's wife looked at him from head to toe, and caused him to feel scared inwardly, before she said, I know what you just pooped as soon as you stick up your butt. Tell me, why are you asking about their watermelons? What's your intention? Wang Ergu, I'm warning you, no matter how good other people's things are, we're not allowed to keep thinking about them. If you repeat your old habits, I'll bring our baby back to my parents' house. I can't let you teach bad things to our baby. Wang Ergu immediately became well behaved. He nodded his head very obediently and promised, Wife, look at you. I'm just curious about what a watermelon looks like. What other thoughts would I have? Rest assured, I have changed. I have really changed. Wang Ergu was nearly 30 when he finally got married. They had been married for almost five years but there still wasn't any good news. Recently, his wife had been vomiting everything she ate and gave him a terrible fright. Dr. Yu was away with his grandnephew and he didn't trust Xia Kao's medical skills, so he borrowed a cart and took his wife to see a doctor in town. The old doctor took her pulse and immediately told him that he was going to be a father. He was so happy that he laughed like a fool and showed off whenever he saw someone, my wife is pregnant, I'm going to be a father. Ergu's wife was so embarrassed that she pinched the flesh on his waist until it was bruised. When they returned, Wang Ergu treated his wife like she was a bodhisattva, and would do his best to get whatever his wife wanted to eat. During the time when Ergu's wife had morning sickness, she almost threw up everything that she eats. She vomited so much that she was about to spit out her guts. Fortunately, when Yuxia Kao found out, she sent them a few batches of greens, cucumbers and tomatoes. At that time, Wang Ergu had even muttered in his heart that the family was stingy, to gift others with vegetables that every family had. Unexpectedly, after his wife ate a tomato, her morning sickness seemed to have suddenly disappeared and she ate everything with relish. But, after Ergu's wife finished the vegetables that the family sent over, she languished again. Ergu's wife was also a diligent person. They also grew cucumbers in their vegetable fields, let alone green leafy vegetables. However, none of them suited her appetite and her morning sickness started again. Wang Ergu hastily went to the Yu residence and bought tomatoes, cucumbers, and some greens. The Yu family's produce had always been two or three times more expensive than other sellers. But, since they were neighbors, the Yu family not only didn't request him to pay the higher price, but they also sold the vegetables at a cheaper price than normal vendors. So Wang Ergu and his wife were very grateful. Ergu's wife's pregnancy was becoming more apparent now. After her morning sickness completely stopped, she gained back the weight that she had lost earlier. The competent Ergu's wife could usually handle watering all their family's farmland by herself. However, it was a crucial period for her right now. So how could Wang Ergu be willing to let his wife do heavy labor? Thus, 
he gritted his teeth and took over the task while patting his chest. Erga's wife knew about her husband's usual conduct, so she was worried about him watering the fields. She quietly followed and monitored him, and thus came across him inquiring the U-siblings. Seeing his eyes darting around ceaselessly, Erga's wife knew that her husband was getting ideas about those watermelons. The U family's friendly sentiments of gifting and selling them vegetables was something that Erga's wife remembered deeply within her heart. How could she permit her husband to have any malicious intent? Recently, the best threat was to say that she would return to her parents' house with their baby. It worked every single time. Sure enough, her husband was vowing and making guarantees to her and acting very obedient. Yuxiaka watched the interaction between the peculiar couple. It seemed like the two were constantly bickering, but their feelings for each other were deep and strong. Rather than saying that Wang Ergu was afraid of his wife, it was better to say that he cherished her deeply. He liked to quarrel with her at times, but he still acted according to his wife's wishes. Xiaka and her older brother waved goodbye to the couple and arrived at their family's melon fields. Looking at the green vines and tiny spots of yellow flowers in the fields, she felt as if she could see a big and round watermelon waving its hands at her. Yu Hang bent his knees to steadily put the buckets on the ground. Then he put down the carrying pole in his hands and took the ladle in Xia Kao's hands. He was about to go water the fields, but he was stopped by his youngest sister. Under her older brother's questioning gaze, Yuxia Ka scooped some water from her own bucket and poured it into the buckets that Yu Hai was carrying. After she poured a ladle of water into both buckets, she told Yu Hang, All right, you can go water the fields now. Yu Hang felt puzzled as he looked at Xia Kao's bucket and softly asked, Youngest sister, is there something special with your bucket of water? Why do you always pour a ladle of it in when we are watering the fields? Yuxia Ka looked around and then she deluded. SHHH. Don't be so loud. This is a fertilizer that I specially made that can fertilize the soil. It was also thanks to this fertilizer that our family had such a high yield of sweet potatoes last year. Oh, I see. Youngest sister, you know so much. You even know how to make fertilizers. If this formula can be made public, then it will definitely benefit a lot of people. She hadn't expected that Yu Hang had the potential to be a saint. No way. She must destroy this quality immediately. Xia Kao appeared even more mysterious as she moved closer to him and whispered, This kind of fertilizer was made with a celestial item that the God of Fortune gave me. When the God of Fortune gave it to me, he specially warned that, as a mere mortal, using the celestial item would definitely consume a certain amount of my vital energy. Thus, it shouldn't be frequently used. Otherwise, it will cause damage to the body. As soon as Xia Kao's health was implicated, Yu Hang instantly changed his mind. Since the use of the celestial item could harm your body, then don't use it anymore. Increasing the yield isn't important. Your health, which had gotten better after much difficulty, is the most important. It's all right. I tried it out already. As long as I don't overuse it, it won't do much harm to my body. I will just feel slightly tired. Yuxia Kao continued to fabricate her white lies. After hearing that, Yu Hang finally felt relieved and bent down to water the melon fields. But he continued to say, in the future, try to use it as little as possible. By the way, what exactly does the celestial item you mentioned look like? Yuxia Kao panicked for a moment and then saw the increasingly dazzling multicolored stone on her wrist. She calmed down and said, here. This is a celestial stone. Yu Hang looked at it and vaguely remembered that this little multicolored stone seemed to have appeared after his youngest sister got injured and went into a coma. He became slightly more convinced and laughed. I thought this was a pretty stone that you picked up in the mountains, so it turned out that it was a divine treasure. You must store it properly and don't let a wicked person steal it away. It's no use even if someone steals it. Celestial items will recognize its owner so it will come back itself even if it got stolen. Yuxia Kao raised her eyebrows and had composed smile on her face. After hearing her words, Yu Hang was finally relieved and sincerely complimented. What a treasure. Of course, this divine stone is an enlightened celestial stone smelted by goddess Nuwa for a total of 49 days who she had kept by her side for a long period of time. The world's one-of-a-kind treasure.
comma the little divine stone transformed into a little golden kitten and appeared on Xiaokao's shoulder out of thin air, with a proud expression. Suddenly, it seemed to have thought of something, and drooped its head and said, A, hey, I wonder if Goddess Niwa would be lonely without me by her side. Without me, Goddess Niwa's monotonous period of seclusion would be so dull. Yuxiakao caressed its little head and whispered, Then you need to help me out more. You should strive to recover your spiritual power earlier, break out of the void, and return to Goddess Niwa's side. I want to. Too. But your life is so peaceful that there's not much that I need to help you with. How much improvement can I make when I only need to produce some mystic stone water every day? There was a slight sense of dissatisfaction within Little Divine Stone's tone. It jumped off of Xiaokao's shoulder and ran around in the watermelon fields. 